Welcome back to the program. My first guest today is Park Ranger Ben Williams. He works at West Point Lake. Welcome to the show, Ben. Thanks, Dave. Glad to have you here. I know you've been on a number of programs mm -hmm. in the past. Uh, you have a wealth of information, so we're glad to have you here to talk about uh, our hunting program that we have at West Point Lake. But before we get started on that, Ben, uh, just share a little bit with our viewers about you, your education, what you, where you got your college degree, and what you currently do at West Point. Okay, well, uh, thanks for letting me be here to, today, David. Uh, I uh, graduated in 2007 from Auburn University with a degree in forestry. Uh, I've been here with the Corps since uh, 2010, so about eight years working in the natural resource management section. Okay. Uh, prior to coming to the Corps, I worked uh, with the Alabama uh, Forestry Commission. I was a Chambers County forester and a wildland firefighter over there. Okay, all right. So you, you have a pretty good uh, background in natural resources and mm -hmm. natural resource That's management. Right. That's great. And currently in your role, uh, what are some of your duties? Well, I manage the, uh, the natural resource management program uh, okay. that we have here at the lake. And uh, the main thing I do is the wildlife management stuff right now. Okay. Uh, with also including the hunting program as well, where we sell the hunting permits for the public to come hunt okay. on core property. And speaking of hunting, hunting season is starting to mm -hmm. approach us here quickly. What's, what's the first game season start? Uh, small game season in Georgia comes in August 15th. So, okay. Uh, if anybody's interested in hunting out here on the core property, uh, they have to get a hunting permit through our office. Uh, and okay. Those go on sale a few days before the season comes in. Okay, all right. So what all do you need to get the hunting permit? How can you obtain it? Well, you can call the office and uh, order it over the phone, uh, or you can come in person, but it's $25 for the permit. Okay. Uh, and that gives you permission to hunt on about 10,000 acres that we have around the lake uh, that's managed by the core. Now we do have a, the West Point WMA, mm -hmm. uh, this is another 10,000 acres, but you have to have a WMA license for that. Your core permit doesn't cover that. Um, but along with the core permit, you have to have your state hunting license for the respective state that you're hunting in. So if you're a Georgia resident, you have to have a Georgia hunting license and a core permit. Now you can cross the state line and hunt, but you have to have an out of state uh, hunting permit for that, depending on where you live. And when you do get your permit, you get right. a hunting map That's and that correct. shows yeah. you what areas you can hunt, it's kind of spread out all over West Point Lake. Uh, you know, we manage 30,000 acres around the lake, right. and so you just said around 10,000 acres for public hunting. Mm -hmm. How do we determine what areas we allow people to hunt? What are some of the determining factors for well, that? Well, you know, uh, adjacent to core property all around the lake, we do have private ownership of land. So mm -hmm. uh, depending on that type of land that's there will depend on if we will allow hunting or not. So. Most of the time, adjacent to your major subdivisions, you won't have any uh, public hunting land mm -hmm. there. Okay. Uh, now, with that said, uh, if you're a waterfowl hunter, you can hunt anywhere on West Point Lake with a core permit. You just have to maintain 1,000 feet away from uh, boat docks, houses, bridges, so, things like that. So, uh, but that's only if you're on the water. If you're on the land uh, hunting waterfowl, then you have to have a, a permit and be in their proper location. Okay. Uh, but, uh, like I said, we've got several uh, that that are where we allow different weapons. We do not allow centerfire rifles anywhere on, on public property. Only shotguns with slugs, uh, but that's just in designated areas, which is far removed from uh, any type of interference we might have uh, from private property. Okay, and you just said the hunting permit fee is $25? $25, that's right. Okay, mm -hmm. and that can be obtained at our office. Uh, again, you can show up there at the West Point Project Management Office mm -hmm. or call our office right. at 706-645-2937. Ben, how many permits do we usually average every year? Uh, since I've been here since 2010, we average about 1,200 permits a year. Okay, so does that money come back to West Point Lake to help with the hunting program and, and other elements of the it natural does. resource that's, management? That's correct. There's a, a percentage of that that comes back. Uh, some of it has to go through uh, the, um, admin fees and things like that for uh, all the other uh, um, management responsibilities that we have, but a portion of that does come back. Okay, and can you lose your privileges to hunt on West Point Lake. Yes, you can. Uh, you can generally, uh, what would cause somebody to lose their, their uh, privilege would be a game violation. We work really close with our uh, local game wardens and if there's any type of issue where a person uh, has a violation, they call us and let us know and then we'll call that individual in, talk to them and, and uh, determine then if that needs to be a, a result of revoking their privilege. Okay, does that happen very often? Not often, I, I want to say probably three times in eight years we've done that. Most everybody around here uh, knows the laws and know what sure. they need to do. Yeah, 
And we have good cooperation with our DNR. That's correct. And, and they are out checking for those permits as yes, well as a uh, hunting license. So uh, we have pretty good. So a question I get, and I'm sure you get as well, is hunting really good out on West Point Lake? Yes, it is. Uh, like I said, we've got 10,000 acres uh, for $25. That's not too bad. Right. Uh, if you're exactly. on a private hunting lease, you're going to play a lot more than that. A lot of the areas we have are, are only accessible by boat, uh, mm -hmm. unless you get permission from the private landowner to cross their property to access core land. Uh, so we do have a lot of t areas tucked away that doesn't get a lot of hunting pressure. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's probably a, a good sized buck out there. Yeah, more than likely. That's yeah. Right. And, and we we'd love for people to, to share it. their harvest mm -hmm. uh, if they if they get a nice deer or, or a big gobbler or something like that mm -hmm. in your turkey season, uh, give us a call. Let, let us see some pictures of it. We can sure. post it on our website and Facebook page and just help promote the program. Yeah. So if you do harvest um, big game, at a lot of, at some of our hunting areas, we have a hunter check-in box, right. right? Right. So what's the requirements with that, and what do we ask if someone does get a good harvest? Well, what we do is it, some of the larger hunting areas we have, we do have a sign-in box. Now, mm -hmm. that doesn't reserve your spot out into in the woods. What that does is just uh, let us know where a person is and also let other hunters know where people are uh, so that nobody's surprised when they're out sure. in the woods. It's mainly a safety thing, especially if something happens and we get a call uh, close to the end of the day and somebody hasn't made it home yet from hunting, we know where we can go start looking for that individual. Sure. Um, also, at those sign-in boxes, we have another box where you can fill out a, a harvest record and drop it off for us. And it, that just gives us a, a, a little bit of knowledge about what type of game we're being taken. Uh, now, both states, currently Alabama and Georgia, require mandatory game check online. Mm -hmm. uh, we do not have access to that until the end of the year, and then we only get total numbers. We don't get, uh, if somebody shot a 10-point buck or an 8-point buck, we, don't, we can't differentiate, differentiate off of those state numbers. Uh, so it, it's, it's a big help to us if you fill out the card and um, let us know exactly what you took. Sure, okay. So what are some things that we do, practices that we do to help um, you know, improve hunting around West Point Lake. Right, well, like I said, with the 10,000 acres, we have approximately 80 acres of food plot. Now, if you look at uh, quality deer management, um, the QDMA program, uh, they would recommend us having uh, closer to 1,000 acres, but budget restraints and sure. uh, access requirements is kind of difficult for us to get that. But we put a lot of emphasis on those 80 acres of food plots, and every time we do a timber harvest in a spot, will turn the logging deck into a new uh, food plot. So okay. we plant spring plots. Uh, the past couple of years, we've been planting uh, iron and clay peas in certain areas. Okay. That helps return nitrogen to the soil, give those deer and turkey something to eat during the summertime. Um, that's just a supplemental food. And then in the fall, uh, we'll plant uh, a fall game mix um, just for uh, supplemental winter feeding. We also have two large dove fields that we have, one in uh, Alabama at mm -hmm. Oakland Road Park and one in Maple Creek Park in Georgia. Okay, great, good. Mm -hmm. uh, we're doing a lot of good things mm -hmm. for uh, the wildlife that's on land. Let's talk a little bit about uh, next few minutes we have, uh, what we're doing for the aquatics out there Okay. Uh, for uh, fish habitat. Right, well we do have 26,000 acres of water that we have to manage here at West Point mm -hmm. Project. And as most people know that are around this area, uh, the, the bottom is, is pretty much devoid of structure. Back when the lake was initially impounded, there was a lot of flooded timber. A lot of that's fallen over and rotted away and washed away, so uh, there's not much shallow water cover out there. Uh, what we've been doing for the past three years is uh, adding to that with some um, man-made structures. We call okay. them spider blocks. They're basically sure. ce cement blocks with plastic pipes sticking out of them, mm -hmm. which when you see it on the ground, it looks like a giant spider. Yeah. So what we do is we, we take those out and we've got designated areas in the lake where we've been adding to them, and we usually put about 75 to 100 uh, individual blocks in one location. And all those locations uh, can be seen through our website, the GPS locations for those. Okay, mm -hmm. great, good deal. Doing a lot of plantings along the shoreline too. That's correct, yes. Um, we, uh, this, uh, this will be our fourth year at doing water willow plantings here at West Point. Uh, okay. Water willow is a native aquatic vegetation. Uh, it's not invasive, it's not like hydrilla or elodea uh, that can take over a lake. This is mm -hmm. native, native uh, vegetation that we like to see uh, we've uh, placed them in approximately 70 locations so far, and they seem to be doing really well. They're, they're surviving the lake drawdown in the winter 
and they're coming back really strong in the spring. So Now, we have some partners with that program, That's right. correct? Yeah, Who is the, that? The Georgia DNR has been a, a big proponent and partner with us uh, ever since this project started. And also uh, local high school fishing teams, uh, the Georgia Bass Nation clubs that are out there, they help us get them in the water and get them planted. Awesome, awesome. One more thing I'd like to touch on. If you ride around West Point Lake, you may notice uh, a plot of wildflowers growing mm -hmm. here and there, uh, especially down around our project management office, mm -hmm. Schaefer Herd. Um, talk about that program for just a, a quick minute. If sure. You know. um, back uh, probably about six years ago, there was a big push to get a pollinator habitat reestablished throughout the United States. And we were able to uh, get a little bit of extra funding to get that program started. But currently, we have about eight acres that we manage for pollinators. That would be your b bees, butterflies, moths, mm -hmm. things like that. Uh, the larger patches of, of wildflowers that we plant, uh, you see, are down by uh, the project management office in Hartley Creek Park. But we also manage some native vegetation areas as well where we rotationally disc those. Okay. Uh, plow it up, you know, once every two years and let natural uh, flowers come in. Mm -hmm. And it also helps us save a little bit of money in mowing costs so we can yeah. we can skip those patches where we have the flowers. Right, because we have a lot of grass to mow, so, so that certainly helped us. Um, can people, can the public pick these flowers? Technically, no, they can. Uh, that's a violation of Title 36. You can't remove any vegetation from a core property. Okay, so just come out and enjoy the flowers. That's right. Ben, I want to thank you for being uh, here on the show. We've talked about a lot of different things. If you have any questions uh, for Ben, feel free to call our office. Ben's available uh, to answer those. Uh, again, that number is 706-645-2937. Ben, thanks for being on the show, and we'll be right back.